What's up, YouTube fans? Today, we're going to do a comparison of the Fans Toy Scoria with the Giga Power Grassle, both versions of a G1 or Masterpiece slag. Uh, so these did come out at different times. This is from 2014. This is from 2020. Although this is a reissue. It's a repaint that was issued in 2019. Now they've put out another repaint in 2020. Um, Last time I did this comparison, there was some talk about the paint. So I think I'm going to just discount the paint. I will show you the images of Scoria X, which is the, you know, special painted, special limited edition version, painted version of the uh, Fans Toys slag. And just so you can see how the paint jobs compare, they're definitely a little different. But since they are, we are an equivalent here because we've got the special X version of Giga Power, we're going to discount paint in this comparison. Um, I'll still look at it though and I'll still show it to you. As I always say with these comparisons, this is uh, mostly my opinion. I try to be as objective as I can, but of course there's subjectivity involved when you're doing something like this. So a lot of this is based on my opinion. But if you like one or the other and the one that scores higher isn't the one that you like, then you win. You, you get the one you like. I like to do this so that people can kind of decide which set they want to go with, what features they like, and which direction they want to go with their collection. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. We'll start off with accessories. All the accessories that come with these guys, there's quite a lot of stuff. So I'll try to go fairly quickly through these. They both come with a gun, different styling. Uh, the fancy is more like a toy, whereas this has got that weathering. But they both light up. There's a button here, and there's a button here. I don't have batteries in them, but they both light up. They both have a sword. Again, different styling, different paint cut style, but they both have a button. They both light up. And then they both come with a bunch of heads. So the Giga Power has this yelling face. Now instead of making faces, they just made separate heads. So it comes with four heads. And they both have this silver yelling face. The Fans Toys has got the red uh, border, whereas the Giga Power has got this weathered silver paint on this one. But there's that. Um, it also comes with a straight silver face. Now this is the original face that came with it and it had that really weird looking smile to it so with the fans toys grimlock their grinder they gave you this better looking mouth but this doesn't come with this figure so i'm not counting it and then the one that's on him is also from grinder so i'm not counting that one so they both come with basically four faces two silver the ones that's on them and i'll just show you they both have the straight straight face but he's got the straight silver he's got the straight red so based on that, they both come with four faces. Uh, Fans Toys is two heads with four faces, whereas the Giga Power is four heads. But either way, you get four options for that. And then here's what you're kind of left with. Now, these aren't accessories for these. So this is for the Takara Tomy version of Grimlock, their Masterpiece Grimlock. It was to make him taller so he'd fit in with this Fans Toys set. Obviously not going to be used anymore. Fans Toys are already made their version of Gig, uh, Grimlock, so we don't need that. And then the Giga Power gives you these, and I'm not sure where these eyes go. I think they're for a different figure, maybe for Sludge. And they're stickers, and you stick them on the eyes, which is really strange to me. Why wouldn't they just give you plastic eyes to replace the eyes in the figure? But either way, it's not for this figure, so we're going to set that aside. And here's what you're left with. You get the plastic pieces for the Dyna Mode, basically the translucent pieces to make it look more like the toy. And we'll take a look at that in the Dynamo. But basically, you get more accessories for the Giga Power. So we're going to give accessories to Giga Power. All right, next we'll talk about the sculpt on these two. And this is uh, it's going to be tough because the paint on the Giga Power really makes the sculpting shine. But in, for my, in my mind, without a doubt, the Giga Power is just, it's got a ton, a ton of sculpt work all over. Um, Fan Toys does have some here and there, and the plastic is molded and sculpted in all areas, but there's just so much more going on. There's so many more rivets, there's so many more little details, little, you know, pieces. They're not actually separate pieces, but they look like separate, you know, little screws or bolts, whatever they are. I mean, just all over. You can see the detail throughout the figure. I mean, look at how much sculpted work is in here. Now, if you just forget about the paint for a minute, even without the paint, it's still, there's a lot of sculpted detail here. Fans always has some in here too, quite a bit. But as you get to the outer edge, less sculpting there. So, and then if you go to the front, 
you'll see this chest just crazy amount of sculpting here. There's so much going on here. Now that's not necessarily cartoon accurate, but it is a lot of sculpted detail and you're paying, you know, you're getting your money's worth in terms of sculpted detail. So we're going to get a sculpt to the so gig. We'll about. talk about the cartoon accuracy. So to do that, we'll put the G1 cartoon image there and you can take a look. And for me personally, I think the Fans Toys hits that cartoon look just so much closer and that's what they were going for and to be fair to the Giga Power, that's not what they're going for they're going for this more premium look right they've got a lot just look at the knees right this one kind of looks like the cartoon was just got all that detail and sculpt work going on in there and that's just to make it give that premium feel and a premium look right? it's got some more realistic pieces to it so while that's not what Giga Power was going for it's clear to me, based on the cartoon image, that Fans Toys nails that cartoon. So we're going to go with Fans Toys for a cartoon to an accuracy. All right, next we're going to talk about the build. So this is actually interesting because I almost always pick Fans Toys for build. And people have started to say, you know, I'm a Fans Toys fanboy. If I am, whatever. You know, it's, it is what it is. You know, I like quality stuff. I like high-end high, high end stuff. And Fans Toys tend to make that kind of thing. But... Um, when it comes to these guys, uh, Fans Toys actually does not feel so good, and that's one of the issues here, is it's got ratchets in the legs, but it's not even close to being able to hold its own weight. This one definitely not. So not only the inner ratchet, but the outer ratchet, they're just weak. The arms are okay. They seem to be fine. They're nice and tight on this one. I, this is my second copy of Scoria, by the way. And the first copy, the arms were loose. So you'd put the gun in and it would fall down. So you needed this joint to be tight because it's friction. For whatever reason, they used friction here. So, and they used ratchet going in and out, which is kind of a strange choice to me. Um, so there is hardware. There are ratchets. You do have die cast in the legs, uh, on the head, and on the feet. But... There is, it, you know, it tends to be a little bit loose. And so as you're posing, you just got to be careful how you get them, get them posed. On the Giga Power, everything is pretty much solid. You've got really tight, solid ratchet joints in every direction. It's so loud, you probably can't even hear me talking over it. Uh, same on the legs. You've got ratchet joints that, you know, are solid. They're not going anywhere. Right, so just very, very, very well built and just feels very robust. Um, everything is um, pretty, pretty robust. I don't feel like I'm going to break anything. On um, the original Super Tour I looked at, it had some weak connection points for the hip skirts. This one doesn't. This one feels good. So I'm going to give build to Giga Power. I just think they did a better job with their hardware, a better job making it feel solid and you know I'm not worried about breaking it there are some parts here that I'm a little worried over time they're gonna break this one it's not going anywhere it's solid as a rock so we'll give build to Giga Power the articulation so to do that we have to go through their actual articulation for these figures so we'll start with the fans toys so the head is on a rotating ball joint so the ball joint goes up a little bit goes down a little bit and then rotates uh, pretty much all the way around. It does get hindered a little bit by this head, the Tino head, but that is a design issue for this character. The arm is on a friction joint all the way around. It goes up to there. Rotation at the bicep. And a single jointed elbow gets you a little past 90 degrees. You do have a rotation at the wrist. And then the typical Fans Toys hand. Actually, this hand did break on me, so I got a replacement from Fans Toys. That's one nice thing about Fans Toys is their service. They always get parts. Uh, but typical Fans Toys hands, two pins for each finger, and then a thumb is on a ball joint. And I've, I've always liked these hands. Uh, rotation at the waist. No ab crunch, although you can maybe fake it with this, but not really. There's no, there's no ab crunch. Legs are on ratchets that go up to there but don't hold, so they fall back to here, and then it hits the backpack and kind of dislodges the backpack which doesn't stay in place at all. And then out to here on a friction joint, again, doesn't hold. 
You got the knee on a ratchet, gets you past 90 degrees. Rotation at the thigh. Ankle tilts up to there and back to there and then forward and back as well. Just a little bit, not too much, but enough for a large character like this. And you can see I'm fighting with him to keep him standing because of those ratchets and legs that aren't strong enough to hold his weight. He's got a lot of weight on his backpack. All right, moving on to Giga Power. So you've got the head on a ball joint. It's a really tight ball joint. Uh, and also, again, because of the character design, very hard to move his, uh, his head. You really don't get much movement at all, fortunately. You can, you can try it, but it, it's tight and it, it tends to hit. Oh, there we go. We got it. But he is scraping and I'm worried about the paint. This is not my figure. This was borrowed by, from Ian Acid, so obviously don't want to damage it, but you get a little bit of rotation there. You get up and down, it's up to there, down to there. A little bit more movement actually than the fans toys. The arms are on a ratchet that goes all the way up to there, which is additional, much further than the fans toys version. Uh, rotates all the way around on a nice soft, tight ratchet. Rotation at the bicep, all very tight. Single jointed elbow gets you 90 degrees. Rotation at the wrist. Single pinned hands, very similar to fans toys. Uh, not single pin, double pinned hands, so each finger has two pins and the thumb is on a ball joint. But you get this little extra digit here on the thumb. So a tiny bit of extra articulation here for the, fan, the uh, hands. You get a rotation at the waist, not ratcheted, just uh, friction. No ab crunch again, although I guess again you could fake it if you wanted to, but not really. So neither of them have that uh, legs go up to there, back to there, pretty far hindered by the backpack, and then out to there on a ratchet joint. Rotation at the thigh. A single judge and knee gets you, is that even 90 degrees? It looks like it's a little bit limited, let's see. Yeah, so not even 90 degrees on the knee. I don't know what's stopping it, but that's as far as it'll go. A ankle tilt, although it's very hard to utilize. You do have an ankle tilt here. Ankle pivot this way, forward, toe tilt, I guess. It's not really an ankle. So you're really just moving the toe. You're not moving anything back here. This is all solid. So it's a little bit of a cheat, but you do get tilt and you get pivot this way as well. So overall, I think Giga Power hits a little bit more articulation, especially in the shoulders uh, and in the arms. And then the head as well uh, gets a little bit more movement up and down. Side to side, they're about the same. So I'm going to give articulation to Giga Power. Right, next, we'll talk about the engineering. <clears throat> so engineering is where fan toys almost always wins me over, and there's no difference on this one. <laughs> so one of the reasons I think they, they do it is the cleanliness, right? So you look at the legs, everything's pretty clean on the outside, on the inside. There's not really any kibble there. The arms are pretty kibble-less. There is kibble on the back for sure, uh, but this is the iconic wing design for this character, so I'm not mad at that. This is a little bit, you know, ugly, but not much you can do there for this character, especially. Um, I really do like the uh, the use of the die cast in the in the horns and all that. But I love the way the legs kind of transform and you get to the Giga Power. It just is like it feels like brute force, right? They they don't want to put a lot of engineering into the legs, so they just put the thing on the back, and it ends up looking bulky and kind of ugly. Right for me, this is pretty ugly, and unfortunately, it doesn't get out of the way of articulation, but it just looks not good. I just don't like the fact that they have that. Um, this back is probably a little bit cleaner, honestly, than the fans' toys, but they both have the same design cues. Right, they both got the wings. They both got the uh, the stegosaur or the uh, what do you call it, the blades or whatever sticking out on the back. And you can kind of pick how you want to show it or whatever, but um, they both have kind of some of the same kibble. If I had to pick, I would say probably the fans toys a little bit less tidy, 
but overall the back is pretty close on both of these. Um, so because of the engine, extra engineering they put into the legs and to get it to uh, transform pretty clean, I'm going to give the engineering to Fans Toys. And when it comes to transformation, um, they're very similar. I mean, the way they're designed, the only difference is the tail on the Giga Power is on the outside of the legs, whereas the tail for Fans Toys is inside his back. It's stored right there, which is kind of a cool design. Although, <laughs> when he comes apart like that, and we talked about that during build. Uh, but the transformation is very similar. The only real difference is that tail. Um, they both kind of have the head that pushes back. They both have the hands that go in. They both have the legs that kind of transform and the dino legs fold out of here. So I, I just prefer, I, I think it looks better with the tail not on the back of the legs. Um, but when it comes to transformation, I think the Giga Power is just a little bit easier. It's a little bit more simple. And, and maybe that's what they're going for, just simple transformation. So we're going to give transformation to Giga Power. And here we have them both in their dyno modes. And again, a very different take on these dynos, because, especially because of the paint. But uh, here they are from the sides. So I've, I've heard this been called the potato version of uh, slag and that's just because of the shape here this one's more rounded a little bit taller um, but there are some issues and, and I, I mentioned this when I scored them on transformation some of these panels just don't stay they tend to pop out um, that's one of the thing and up here too this this panel just tends to pop out so not the best in terms of transforming into this mode if you just if you don't touch it he's okay but a little bit irritating um, but he looks amazing. I love this, the chrome on the head and the mouth. It looks really nice. love the chrome on the horns here and on the, what do you call this? His little head dressing there. And then the chrome all around looks pretty good. The tail does move here. you got articulation this way. You have... Uh, Again, the soft ratchets for the legs, and then a ratchet down here, uh, no ratchet here. So just that one part of the leg has the ratchet. The head does rotate, and the mouth does open up all the way, and you have the gun in there. You can aim the gun if you want to. And then this part, I think it's meant to go all the way down, so not really articulated, but you can kind of move it around. So for the... Giga Power, you have the mouth opens all the way down to there. And then this gun is sort of on its own little arm. So that actually fits all the way up to the side of the mouth, but it's interesting. The head does rotate uh, and it goes up and down as well. The arms are on those same ratchets, really nice and strong. And they go out, I guess these go out too. Uh, and then rotation here, and ratchet joint really nice and tight. Um, they do move the toes on both legs, and same on here. I forgot to mention that. They move. So very similar articulation. Oh, and then these horns do move. I noticed, I thought well, what was the scratch there, but then I realized there's the identical scratch on this other side, so... It's, it's not a scratch, it's just the weathering look that they gave him. So all in all, pretty good looking dyno modes. Um, if you're going for tune accuracy, then obviously the Giga Power is not going to look like the tune. It's much more specialized, intended to look, you know, give this weathered look. It really looks cool. Um, this one is just kind of very oddly shaped. And it's more long than it is tall. So that makes him look kind of like the potato. Um, while I do like the head a lot, I like the look of the head, I like the look of the, uh, the tail, I like the horns. I think overall this is a better looking slag in the, in the dyno mode. So I'm going to give dyno mode to Giga Power. Now there are some accessories that you can use. So you can put these on here and use those if you want to. All of these can come on if, if you like them. This tailpiece here, and that just slides over. 
And then finally you have the leg pieces. Is that the wrong one? Here, let's try this one. Oh, and then you have these pieces here for the back of the tail. I believe they just slide in like that. And now you've got that fully smoked looking tail, which is kind of cool. And then you got the smoked head there with the translucent piece. Nice that they give you that option. I would probably never display it that way, but it's cool that they give you that. So either way, we're going to give Dynamo to Giga power. And the final factor here is the cost. So this is a little bit unfair because we are taking a retail price for each of these and this is the painted X version special edition. So it's going to cost a little more because they put more work into the paint. So I'll tell you the cost for both the standard version and the painted version at retail. Again, we're talking retail, we're not talking aftermarket, we're not talking third, you know, party vendor, whatever. So this was 200 at retail. This is 200 and 40 for the weathered version. You could get it even lower, around 230, but it's still higher. The original version was 180 or 170, around that range, when released at retail without the special paint job. So if you were just comparing apples to apples in terms of the price of the standard version, Fans Toys is going to come out higher in terms of price, so Giga Power is going to win on cost. Now, when we talk about the weathered version, it's going to lose. So we're going to give it a tie here just because it's kind of hard to price these uh, comparatively. We'd have to look at the X version of Fans Toys to, to really compare and say, okay, you know, are, you know, are the costs equivalent? So we're going to give it a tie for cost. So final thoughts, you can see the score there. And Giga Power wins this one very easily, handily. And yeah, it does surprise me a little bit, but not so much. I mean, this is one of Fans Toys' first figures, FTO4. Only a few more before it. Uh, and... It's their first Dinobot they put out. So, with that being said, I don't know if they hit all the marks. You know, here they are with Transform Elements Optimus, same size as the official. And you can see the Fan Stoice is basically the same size, whereas the Giga Power towers over him. They should be bigger. And later in the line, Fan Stoice increased the size of the Dinobots. So, unfortunately, Scoria tends to be a little small compared to his. Dino buddies in in the group, so that's another little thing. Is I think they just got the size wrong on this guy. Um, but that's really it. You know, I I'm not going to be collecting these Giga Power, but I think at least in this case, it is actually way better in terms of a robot and the Dino mode. I think overall, Giga Power really nailed it with this bot. Grasshopper is probably one of the best in the set that I've looked at. So that's really it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.